A letter the leader of Stanford Health sent to the system's employees has caused a firestorm across the state and even nationally. Kelly Krabenhoff shared that he had recovered from COVID-19, but his comments about masking received the most attention. Stanford Health issued a statement today saying Krabenhoff's email was based on his own experience and his personal opinions. They do not reflect the views of the health system. Kelloland's Angela Kennecke secured the only television interview with Sanford's CEO. I sat down with Krabenhoff this afternoon. Right after my interview, he was scheduled to speak with the New York Times. Krabenhoff says his email has been misinterpreted. I asked him pointed questions about why Sanford Health has not come out in favor of a mask mandate and whether he was worried about his already taxed health care workers taking offense to his email. Krabenhoft says he contracted the virus around Halloween after watching a football game on TV outside on his deck with a friend who ended up testing positive. It's almost the classic story now. Um, I had uh, at first so, so minor that you kind of made fun of it. Uh, it felt like a cold. And then, uh, and then I got to about day six or seven. I had a spike in temperature, uh, got up just at 100. I mean, it wasn't dangerous or anything but uh, started coughing, lost my sense of smell and taste, and uh, uh, went through the classic symptoms. Krabenhoff quarantined and then returned to work a couple of weeks ago. This week he wrote a letter to staff telling them about his experience. It was his comments on mask in the email that started a firestorm. He said, masks have been a symbolic issue and that frankly frustrates me. He went on to write, the on-again, off-again behavior of mask use by the general population violates every notion of serious infectious management that I was trained to adhere to, so some of this is absurd. People, as I observe, out in the public and elsewhere who put their mask on, take their mask off, uh, uh, the notion that you can sit at a table with people and not wear a mask, but when you're in line to get to your table, you have to wear a mask, that, that's not consistent with a healthcare worker who's been trained uh, in infectious control to, to do that. That was the only point. Krabenhoft also wrote in the email, the information, science, truth, advice, and growing evidence is that I am immune for at least seven months and perhaps for years to come. Krabenhoff did provide us with a New York Times report on new studies that indicate that may be the case. He also wrote in his email, for me to wear a mask defies the efficacy and purpose of a mask and sends an untruthful message that I am susceptible to infection or could transmit it. I have no interest in using masks as a symbolic gesture. I'm not a researcher, Angela. You know, I'm not a doctor. I'm, I, all I did in my letter was, again, in a, in a hopeful way, in a positive way, as a, as a recovering virus patient, suggest that uh, there is a growing body of evidence and discussion about the longevity of the Im immunity that is ga garnered from this. That's all I said. That's all I said. Do you believe it's safe for you to go without a mask for a long time, a long period of time? Uh, in accordance with the protocols and guidelines that the CDC is putting out there, um, uh, I should, I should wear a mask, and I, sh I don't have to, like everybody else, Will uh, you? in accordance with those protocols. Will you? Well, of course. Of course. Krabenhoff says Sanford Health is not at a breaking point, and he doesn't call the pandemic a health crisis. It's hard for me to say we are at a crisis. That would be misleading from a clinical standpoint, from a staffing standpoint, from from. My, my team working hours and hours trying to come up with creative solutions on where to discharge people and where to get staff. We're at a stressed point. <laughs> I understand that uh, staff is receiving daily emails requesting additional nursing shifts be picked up, um, that internal medicine specialists have had to start admitting patients because hospitalists are overwhelmed. Yeah. Is that a crisis? That's trying, I, I, I can't get to the word crisis because I've seen crisis. I've, I've seen uh, bus accidents that overwhelm an emergency room. You know, I've seen, I've seen real trauma. Um, 
we have a we have a surge of volume that was anticipated, that was that we're prepared for, that we have equipment, staff, and facilities for, and and so it's. The word crisis to me is one that I think we should be very cautious using. Sanford Health did not endorse the mask mandate for the city of Sioux Falls, while Avera Health did. Krabenhoff says while health systems provide local and state leaders with information, it's not up to them to dictate policy. Wouldn't it be the place then for Sanford Health to either say they, they, to say they support a mask mandate to help protect your health care workers? to make sure you have enough staff. I'm, I'm really not trying to parse words or be cute here. I, I, I think the mask mandate issue has become such a fire point that I'm trying to focus on other things. I'm, I'm trying to focus on where we can discharge patients. Can we open up wings in nursing homes that are currently closed? Can we, can we do other things of priority? There's plenty of discussion about masks. I wrote a 200 word letter to my employees and the only sentences that are getting focus are about masks. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to do my job and focus on the things that really matter. Um, masks matter, so that'll get me, masks matter, I've got one. Um, a lot of other things matter too. Krabenhoff told us that out of the 1,500 people hospitalized in the Sanford system, 390 are being treated for the virus. He talked about the need to serve all patients and his optimism about getting a vaccine next month for health care workers. You can listen to his entire interview online on Kevilband.com.